we're plugging away at the new album for sure. We got started on this new song, uh, She Knows, what I did with Tamarackin. I did some work in Nashville and, uh, no, I just, uh, doing shows here and there. Still, still doing my thing. You know, it's been a lifelong dream for yours to become a musician. Tell us about growing up in Sucker Creek, getting that love for uh, country music. Uh, well, my folks used to listen to, uh, to a lot of George Jones, Merle Haggard, all of that stuff. And, you know, um, I remember my mom would be dancing with a broom or a mop or whatever it may be, <laughs> listening to her old Nazareth records or country records. And, and then uh, you get into a vehicle, and then you got the A-tracks and the cassettes, and it was all, you know, everything from Con uh, Conway Twitty to George uh, Jones, George Strait, Charlie Pride, all that stuff, right? So a lot of times I'd, we'd go to Prince George from, from Sucker Creek. We'd travel a lot, and then... Uh, and then I remember going back in the, in the backyard in the old cars my, my mushroom had in the backyard and that, because of the acoustics, and that's where I'd try to copy all these singers before <laughs> I brought it out and, you know, sang in front of people. So that's how that came to be, and it's, it's, it's a lifestyle for sure. Yeah. Growing up, who were some of your musical influences? Well, as I mentioned, George Jones, but Keith Whitley. Uh, as for, like, uh, Indigenous artists, I grew up, I think everybody, every res had a little bit of Ernest Munoz flowing there. Oh, yeah. There and, uh, Got to have all Ernest. And Harley Davis and yeah. Harry Davies and guys like that. Uh, <clears throat> I grew up listening to and then uh, grew up listening to, or seeing live bands. Uh, we'd have functions there on the reserve. And then I got to see uh, bands like uh, Turquoise and Sacred Ground and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Kirk Boucher. Yeah, yeah. So a, a lot of them guys, and I, I grew up looking up to guys like that. My cousin Thomas and uh, just a lot of musically inclined people in my family, Rainy Gervais. So let's go back to your first single. Uh, what was it? My first single. Your first wow. ever single. I think it was, uh, well, there's one song there I did, uh, If It Hadn't Been. And it was just a twangy three-chord uh, song that I did on a little pawn shop guitar and uh, just a rough scratch recording. and. I remember the uh, I brought that in, but if it hadn't been, was the first one, and time went on as well. Was uh, I think the first first one that actually kind of you know kind of was recognizable to people. Uh, so time went on. I did a little scratch demo of that as well, but obviously I recut that in the studio for the right. for the album. Mm. Uh, your your latest single, of called uh, of course, is uh, she knows. Tell us all about that. <clears throat> well, this song is about a guy being a bad boy. It's uh. It's uh, about misadventures of, of, a, of a guy, or whether it be a musician or a guy who works out of town, but, uh, you know, he's uh, feeling uh, regret and a little bit of uh, guilt for, for some of the things he's done, and then he goes home to his, uh, to his wife and stuff like that, and uh, I think, I think uh, here in Indian country, I think we can relate to, to that. Sure. I mean, life is life, right? Yeah. So I'm working on this new album, Highway Reclamation, and the, the meaning of that is, uh, well, it's a follow-up to Road Renditions, but it's about reverting back to my country roots, and, okay. uh, and uh, you know, I want each, I'm making amends with my past and stuff like that to, to get, on, uh, get on back on track, right? Mm. And then a lot of it is about, uh, you know, the recordings, I want to, everything's different on this album. I want to, it's, I think it's important that each instrument should have a heartbeat, and uh, that's what we're doing here, live, uh, live studio tracking and stuff like that. So that's uh, it's going to be a little different, and uh, that's what we're looking to do with Highway Reclamation. Of course, you're a well-known Alberta artist. Uh, <laughs> how hard is it, uh, you know, uh, for yourself to, or even an other Indigenous artist to get out there and, and make singles or albums? Is that a hard process? Uh, well, it's not. The process isn't hard. Well, obviously, the, obviously the finances yeah. are, are tough for a guy like me. I, like, I'm on a, tr on a trucker's budget. Mm. So a lot of times, I, you know, when I have the, the spare cash, I kind of throw it towards uh, my music, right? And with hopes of, uh, you know, generating enough of, of a buzz that I can possibly get a show or two out of it. And that's, you know, you, 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 it's give and take for sure, but it's, oh. it's a passion first and foremost, right? Uh, again, like we were saying, your new single of, is uh, She Knows. You brought your guitar. Would love to hear uh, you, you perform it live. <laughs> Sure. It's I'll Nathan Cunningham live at CFWE. Well, she don't like none of my friends. Cause they inspire me to leave her. I hit the bottle for days on end. But she don't care none of my songs. Do 
I bring myself to please her? What's gonna kill me is what she don't wanna know. Well, I've got love for the lady, mother of my babies. Well, what's gonna kill me is what she don't wanna know. She sounds. Good man, Mr. Nathan Cunningham, live at CFWE. Nathan, we were briefly touching on uh, Aboriginal artists uh, a few minutes ago. What's your take on the current, uh, I guess, roster of uh, talents out there? Seems uh, like it's exploding right now. Oh, I think I think we're growing for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, I've been asked several times why I don't uh, uh, press into the mainstream market. One one reason it it, it it is tough, but it is doable. But the the thing I I uh, want to you know what I hope to accomplish is to inspire up and coming uh, indigenous artists and grow the, the industry that I'm in the market that I'm in because we are growing. Yeah. Um, I see uh, at one point in time when I when I first actually uh, got on the Abor- National Aboriginal Music Countdown there was signed artists and uh, you know well distributed artists and Shane Yellowbird I think was uh, at that time. Was the he was a signed artist and he was the only artist from Man, uh, from Alberta hmm. and uh, and it was all country, but uh, you know over time it kind of you know uh, I got on there. There's m- me from Sucker Creek, which was a big deal to me and it still is. So I'm pretty grateful for that. But uh, but now that I, I see there's different genres, different uh, you know um, backgrounds and people from every province on there and actually into the states and it, it's grown a lot and yeah. i think now I'm, I'm seeing people from the mainstream market you know hoping to get a piece of ours as well right. <laughs> <laughs> so i think i think we're pretty uh we're pretty gr- lucky to have the outlets we have and you know i think we should expand on what we have and you know water the grass sort of thing sure uh, in 2014, you were nominated for Album of the Year at the Junos. You also won Aboriginal People's Choice Awards. When you win for yourself, Nathan, or even nominated, what does that mean for you? I think anytime you're acknowledged for something you're passionate about, it's 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 like it's not only flattering, but it's uh, you know it's like it's a it's a relieving feeling that uh, that hey, I got a purpose here, you know, and people are actually listening, and that's that's so it's it's humbling. It's uh, you know, generally, actually, at one point, it, I bet it inflated my ego a little bit. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, it, it's it's really humbling and, and um, you know, to be acknowledged for something that you've been passionate about your whole life. So, yeah. obviously, you know, that's huge. 
You were talking briefly uh, about, uh, you know, recently you, you're doing a little life change. You quit uh, drinking. You're you're quitting smoking. Way to go on that, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually day three now without a cigarette, and that's a huge... I, I was smoking since I was 11 years yeah. old. On Two that. packs a day, you Two were Two packs eh? a day, man. That's Holy like smokes. That's like $30 nowadays. <laughs> no. So I, I saved myself $90 in three days, so... So why did you decide just to do that? Just uh, better yourself, or...? Well, yeah, I'm getting a little yeah. older. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not going to kid myself. Right. I'm a little closer to 40. Than I am 30 now, so <laughs> obviously it starts pushing back, and you got to start making changes, right? Um, you know, I can uh, I can feel it when you know working or anything I do that it's starting to wear me down a little bit. So not only on the pocket, but the health and everything. So it's just something I I decided to do, you know. And uh, I'm on this uh, on the vapor thing now. So, but it's an but it's an alternative. I've it tried, works. I've tried the Champix. I've tried everything, yeah. but this stuff really helps. Any ETA on the new album? I'm shooting for the fall of this year. All right. Uh, like I say, the, the cutting, the smoking, and all of the other stuff out. Well, it's. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I think it's. Now you can afford to do a little bit more music as well, <laughs> <That's> right? right. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I would. Uh, would. I'm banking on the fall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, all right. Uh, pending, I guess. Appreciate coming by, man. Hey, and thanks for having me. You know, one of the first songs I played when I started working here uh, a couple of years ago was "Drinking Thing." Okay. That was one of my, uh, I guess, uh, I, that's when I got introduced to you. Tell us about that tone. Gary Stewart, uh, one of the, the guy with the Elvis vibrato, he was a, he was a really, you know, underrated country artist, and, and that's one of the influences as well that I've listened to. I, 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 I try to take a piece from every artist that I listen to, and that's what uh, most artists will tell you. Is they, but Gary Stewart was uh, someone I stole from as well. All right. So I tried to give a little bit back, right? And uh, drinking thing was... Uh, you know, one of the one of the songs that stood out uh, with him, right, for me. So I I took it, uh, brought my uncle Rainey on there, Gervais, who played the strings, and uh, he helped me uh, translate that song into to something I, I at the time I tr I thought was more modern and uh, up tempo than the original, but at the same time without without butchering the original too much, right. So it was a fun time for sure. His new single is called Genos, and that is a great single which uh, we added. Tamarack. That's right, right Melton and the, and the guys are. You betcha. All right, don't be a stranger, man. Come by anytime. Thanks. Thank you very much.